Episode Adventures in Paris Quantic Dream Quantic Dream in Paris Tour de France and Hookers in the Forest As it may be apparent, I have traveled often and all over the world for my job in video game development. And I have seen the world everywhere, without exception, loves entertainment, and the world loves video games. There seemed to be no place anywhere in the world that you could not find video game developers or people teeming with ideas to pitch at anyone that would listen to them. Consequently, I traveled a lot to review developers and their work and their progress. I performed due diligence to assess who we should or should not hire or work with or sign a license agreement with. I reviewed companies for organization, staff, product, technology, and project management capabilities. I reviewed their plans across the board. I reviewed product roadmaps all the way through retail and even afterwards if it were a service or otherwise patch plans or DLC. I reviewed product individual milestones and their plans to be achieved. I would address any unfinished, unpolished, deliverable overhang or technical debt into the next milestone and ask how the team will finish those subsequent milestones as well as that debt. I would ask for progressively less detail as the milestones were further out. So that way it was really high detail right here, right now. The next milestone was about half fidelity and half that until there was really more a list of what should arrive by that milestone. And of course, all the intergroup dependencies. So I deep dive reviewed experience design, user interfaces, content breadth and depth, total product scope, product quality planning and assessments, code, tools, pipelines, and architecture, telemetry and analytics plans, schedules, plans, and bug databases and tracking, risk, threat, and mitigation analysis and planning, open source and licensed middleware and content, again, for reviewing, innovation and copyright and patent opportunities, as well as infringements, finance, business, and legal affairs. I think you get the idea. I did pretty much everything that had to do with finding, assessing, hiring, and working with developers, all the way from concept to released product to business. And of course, legal. And in the cases of service experiences that have online components, like I mentioned, I would work with the developers potentially for years after their product was released. I cannot repeat this enough, so please bear with me. As I have said before, the magic is being able to create an experience, not just conceive of one. The ability to conceive of an idea is, well, not that special. Everyone seems to have good ideas, but most people have no idea what to do with them or how to create them. Therefore, the ability to make something into reality that is extraordinary that is special, is remarkably special. Summarized, the ability to make something from an idea is extraordinary and conceiving ideas is not. Now, for those that have grand ideas but have no idea how to make them, learn how to make them. Learn how to be part of a team that can make your dreams a reality. There is a role for you. There are no limits for you that you do not place on yourself. Let's get back to one of my world adventures. I had finished visiting a developer in Sheffield, England, a few hours, a train ride north of London, and was about to finish visiting another developer based in Brighton Beach, United Kingdom. So why does all that matter that I was in the UK? Well, my next developer stop was in Paris, France, and so I plan to take a train via the Channel station. That is to say, there is a train that runs under the English Channel, connecting England and France, below the ocean water above. Perhaps it was a portent of my wild adventure to come, but my train to the Channel station itself was delayed. I did not arrive at the Channel station for some time. Apparently, a man sought to commit suicide by laying across the train tracks. 
And apparently, he was successful. He was hit by the train. Splat! He died. Big mess. And so, there was no clear time when the tracks would be clean of his blood and gore and the trains running again across them. It is always an odd thing. Do you feel sad for the death of the man and why he felt suicide was his only way out? Or do you feel annoyed that this random man whom you've never met, whose life he declared himself was not valuable, was messing with your life and itinerary? Well, I think I felt both. I felt sad for the dead guy. And I also felt sad for my blown up itinerary and the impacts thereof. Well, it turned out there was an alternative train route that could get me to the Channel Station. It took hours of going the wrong way, but the route eventually looped back where a connecting train would get us to the Channel. Like I had pondered, was all of this trouble a portent of things to come in Paris, France? Well, First class passage was very little more money than standard passage on the Channel train. So I booked first class. Once I was on board the Channel train in first class, it was nice. Each seat was big, plush. Each had its own television, luxurious seat and table, and international power plugs. And they frequently served snacks and drink service. The ride was nice, calm, and short. It may be that my Channel first class train ride was the best part of my Paris France trip, as you will see. Indeed, I was fortunate to be first class in the Channel train ride all the way. Luxurious seat and table, television, snacks and drinks. It was so nice after the London tube and so many trains and taxis. Well, upon deboarding the train and entering Paris, it was dark. I don't mean it was dark outside, like it was dusk or evening. No, it was dystopian dark. My first impression coming off first class channel train service was that I had entered a cesspool of destitution and desperation of humanity. Trash, debris was strewn everywhere. Bums and the homeless lined the streets. Panhandlers barked from every corner and alley. It felt as if anything unwatched would be stolen in the blink of an eye. Lines of people queued for taxis to escape the hellscape they had been dropped off in. Honestly, it felt like Los Angeles, California, or deep, dark San Francisco, California, with homeless and crime everywhere rampant. So, my first impression of Paris was not great. But hey, it was a train station. They're not known for being posh or fancy. So I kept a positive, open mind on the rest of my adventure. When arriving at the hotel, it was supposed to be elegant and posh itself. And in a way, it was elegant and posh. It certainly used to be elegant and posh. Far, far back in its day. Now, the hotel must be a landmark because everything about it was old antique old. The bathtub and in-room appointments were from the 1920s at best. They were antique. Walls and rails and doors were dinged and dented. Paint was worn and faded with occasional visible long scratches. The hotel was, well, clean and generally maintained. It was just old. It seemed they were going for the old world charm, or at least old. Well, that is charming if you were into that sort of thing. I was not. Anyway, I was to rendezvous with my colleagues at a little street side restaurant near the hotel where they were also staying. There's little to note during our uneventful arrival dinner. However, as I picked up a slice of pizza from the mini pizza that I had ordered, a silvery white goopy sauce fell onto my pizza from the heavens. And immediately following the bonus extra pizza sauce topping, another silver white goopy sauce glop landed onto my shoulder, then a third on my forehead. I was angry, and I wondered who the heck was throwing sauce around? Well, there was no one throwing food or sauce around. 
The silver white sauce was pigeon poop. Apparently a pigeon timed it perfectly to fly over and poop down onto my pizza, my shoulder, my arm, and my forehead. And absolutely none on anyone or anything else, not even the table, just me. The pigeon surgically targeted and bombed me with great accuracy. The bottom line, my welcome to Paris greeting was a poo storm or a poo bombing. On another tale, I recall walking early evening back to that hotel and my co-workers and I eyed a toy store across the street. Many of us collected toys and games and all sorts of collectibles. Anyway, we all thought, hey, let's go over there and see what kinds of toys they sell. Across the street we strolled and up to the toy store we went. And oh my, the toy store had a display window with shelves of toys, dolls, and collectibles. One shelf, however, had a single Barbie on it. But this Barbie was no ordinary Barbie. This Barbie was Bondage Barbie, BDSM Barbie. It was Bondage Dominatrix Barbie. Barbie wore leather leggings, a skirt, and a corset, and she donned knee-high spiked boots as she held a black whip. So there you had it. From the pigeon poo bombing to Bondage Dominatrix Barbie, I was getting the impression that Paris was very adult rated. I managed to slip out one day to visit the Eiffel Tower. I would like to share how glorious and magnificent it was, but well, it was immensely touristy and crowded. I did not feel any of the magic that had been advertised or that I had imagined. Alas, the Eiffel Tower for me proved to be an expensive excursion with little reward for me personally. Whenever I visited foreign locales, I would take my DSLR digital camera and zoom lens with me and walk about into the real neighborhoods and the real backwoods, as it were, of the places I went to. This trip, however, it did not work out. Apparently, the Tour de France was racing when I would have been able to go on my walkabout photo safari adventure. They closed down the roads and many areas that I might visit in order to support the Tour de France race route. And so the Tour de France prevented me from seeing more of Paris. My colleagues were excited and preferred to see the Tour de France themselves. Well, good for them, not good for me. One evening, the developer we were visiting took us to a fancy restaurant for dinner. Let's talk about the drive to the restaurant before our excellent dining experience. The way to the restaurant wound through a curvy tree-laden forest area road. Lined on both sides of the road were forest dryads amidst the trees. Yeah, women were littered standing throughout the trees on either side of the road. There were dozens, I believe maybe hundreds of women all amongst the forest trees at night on either side of the road. It was mysterious. Well, the ladies were all provocatively dressed. They wore skirts to corsets, nylons to straps, even sheer clothing to leather. And they had makeup that you could see 30 feet away onto the street. We drove through the forest of dryad prostitutes and we escaped the hookers of the forest. It is an interesting thing how that area apparently had become the pickup place for prostitution. And according to our driver, everyone knew where to go for an escort. Well, when we finally visited the developer, Quantic Dream, I was impressed. Quantic Dream was the developer of the game Heavy Rain, which was a story-driven movie-like game that used a lot of motion capture for animation. Quantic Dream had impressive motion capture and set abilities. They had outstanding pre- and post-production editing and processing capabilities. They used structured pre-planning processes and were very cost-conscious. The team was motivated and they were passionate. I was honestly quite impressed with Quantic Dream. Although laws and country policies change, when we were engaging with Quantic Dream, we had to take into account French vacation laws. Yeah. France had vacation laws that were real considerations for us. 
France had a minimum of 30 days of vacation per year during the summer, and many people took as much as two months off at that time. And France soft pressured people to take at least the 30 days or more during July and August specifically. July and August were apparently the best time to be outdoors in France, and so the country wanted to concentrate the downtime on businesses by encouraging July and August as vacation times across the country. Well, great, and no problem, but project managers would need to plan for potentially very different working schedules and dependencies when working with people that were based in France. Well, while there were dicey beginnings, in the end, I was positive about Quantic Dream. I felt they would probably be a valuable partner to work with, and yes, I do not recall any business trip that was not an adventure. <laughs>